Welcome to Gigi in Tennessee and welcome to my kitchen. I'm April, if we've not met yet before. And if we have, it's so nice to have you back. We are participating in Three Rivers Pantry Challenge and we have just concluded week seven. So this week was a little different than most weeks because we had the Super Bowl, we had Mardi Gras, and we had Valentine's all in the same week. And Mardi Gras and Valentine's were during the work week. So things were a little different for us this week than they typically are. I hope you guys enjoy as I share what we ate this week. And I hope this gives some of you inspiration of what to do with some of the stuff that you have in your pantry. Dinner is served. This is my Super Bowl happy plate. We have barbecue meatballs, hot buffalo chicken dip, celery, some chicken crackers, and the buffalo wings anytizers that I had picked up on clearance at Kroger. This is dinner for tonight. Hi friend, tonight for dinner we are having meatball stew. We are gonna use one pound of ground beef, about a half a jar of some root, some Cajun seasoning, potatoes, carrots, an onion, a couple of pieces of frozen bell pepper, and some water. Simple and easy. I seasoned the ground meat the same way I seasoned the meatloaf a few weeks ago. The only difference is I did not put onion on the inside of the meatballs. Instead, I added a chopped onion to the stew. I used water as a binder, the same as I did in the meatloaf. Here it is, meatball stew. My favorite side with meatball stew is a vinegar based coleslaw. I don't have any fresh cabbage, but I do have sauerkraut. Sauerkraut that was made with purple cabbage. And so we're gonna have that. Just like the gumbos, every stew is unique based upon the ingredients in it. And the meatball stew tastes different from a chicken stew to a duck stew to a pork stew. They all taste different. And I like them all, especially in the winter time. Mm, mm, mm. This is so good. We're making a little French toast casserole with the leftover king cake. I sprinkled the top with cinnamon. I had this leftover purple sugar in the fridge that needed to be used up. And I had made a few more king cakes and we had a little bit left. So I just threw them together. This one, I'm not in a hurry to bake it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it and put it in the fridge overnight and bake it in the morning. It's not very pretty because of the purple sugar, but you know what? It's gonna eat all the same. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. King cake French toast casserole. This is gonna be so delicious. This is even better than the original because it's very moist. Using everything up, not letting anything go to waste. Breakfast is served, and I know this is so good. Mm. This just takes king cake to the next level. This is scrumptious. Tonight for dinner, we are having what I call Cajun Hamburger Helper. You're gonna need two to three cups of cooked rice, one to two pounds of ground meat, an onion, one can of corn, Cajun seasoning, and a pint of tomatoes from the garden or Rotel. These tomatoes have peppers in them. Season and then brown your onion and ground meat together. After my ground meat is brown, I add the tomatoes. A can of Rotel is fine if you don't have Gordon tomatoes. I'm gonna cook this down, add the corn. This is one can of drained corn. Give it a stir. Three minutes later, this is what it looks like. There's no gravy, it's just brown juice. The tomatoes. Add the rice, give it a toss, and it's ready. Cajun hamburger helper, ground meat, corn, and rice. This is always good. It tastes different than rice and gravy because it's not a gravy. It tastes different than jambalaya. It tastes different than soups and stews. It's just ground meat, corn, and rice. Cajun hamburger helper. Tonight for dinner, we are going to have Louisiana crawfish. Not quite sure how I'm gonna cook it yet. So I decided to make crawfish etouffee with a pound and a half of the crawfish. And the last half a pound, I'm gonna make crawfish fritters with red pepper jelly. I will put this recipe below if you're interested. This is our absolute favorite restaurant in New Orleans, GW Finn's. I thought it would be really sweet to have a taste of our favorite restaurant tonight. You need half a cup of milk, Cajun seasoning, one egg, baking powder. I'm using coconut oil to fry them in. I like to use these to fry because they have such a high 
smoke point. Need some pepper jelly to coat them. The crawfish, jalapeno, I'm using frozen, and three fourths a cup of flour. That's it. I'm not gonna make it on camera, but I will show you the final result, and I will also link a copy of this recipe. It says it makes three dozen. I'm probably gonna make these pretty big. We'll see how many we end up with. Then I'm gonna take the rest of those rolls for the meal I did in the Valentine video. I'm gonna use the other two with the rest of the garlic butter, and I'm gonna make some garlic cheesy bread to go with our crawfish etouffee. So we'll have crawfish etouffee, crawfish fritters, the bread, and our beautiful little heart truffles. This is what the batter looks like as it's going into the oil. The recipe says it makes three dozen, and I ended up with two dozen. Pour this pepper jelly on top of our crawfish fritters. I made crawfish etouffee in our little heart. It held a pound and a half. There is a recipe on the back of the crawfish. I do make crawfish etouffee like this sometimes, but that's not how I made it tonight. This is our Valentine's meal. And our crawfish etouffee. Just plate it up. Then I'll show you what the plate looks like. And this is our beautiful Valentine's meal. We have garlic cheese bread, crawfish fritters with pepper jelly, crawfish etouffee, our chocolate buckeye truffles. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope y'all are having a great one. For dinner tonight, we're gonna have a simple bunless burgers. We're gonna do bacon cheddar. This is what I had in the freezer. Baby heirloom potatoes on the side. And I may cut up some sweet potatoes and do sweet potato fries. Keeping it simple and easy. Here it is, plated up. I decided to serve with homemade sauerkraut and beets and skipped the sweet potatoes fries altogether. I air fried the bacon and the potatoes together for 15 minutes and I seasoned with this buttery steakhouse kinder seasoning. And then the burgers, I air fried for eight minutes and I also seasoned with this buttery steakhouse rub. When I pulled them out, I put a little bit of kinder's barbecue sauce on top. The potatoes crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. And I could use a knife to cut into this hamburger, but instead I'm gonna break it. It's moist and juicy. A steakhouse barbecue burger, quick and easy. Tonight for dinner, my sweet daughter in love is making a delicious treat. She is making sesame marinated pork belly. She's gonna use pork belly, ginger, soy sauce, sesame oil, brown sugar, better than bouillon chicken, garlic, and water. I think that's everything that she's gonna use for the pork belly. She's gonna top it with green onions and sesame seeds. And this is some kind of special treat. Come tell us what this is. This is soy sauce. It has green onion, green chili, red chili, red and yellow onion, um, sesame oil, water, white vinegar, and it's just a Korean marinated egg. It has to be marinated over six hours. Okay, so you boiled the eggs last night? Yes, Okay. And they're soft boiled. They're soft boiled, and then you just had them marinating, and then we'll have them with our pork belly. Okay, awesome. Okay. She has four cups of water in here. She's gonna put the chicken bouillon, and then I'll bring you back. I'm so happy, I'm so excited. We're eating something different, and she's an amazing cook. Okay, so we chop the pork belly into one inch pieces, and we put it in the water with the chicken bouillon, ginger, salt, pepper, garlic, and so now we're gonna bring it to a boil, and then after it boils, we're gonna let it simmer for 30 minutes until it's really good. It smells delicious. I mean, it smells yummy already. All right, so bring to a boil and then simmer for 30 minutes. Okay, so we just took the pork belly out of the simmering water for 30 minutes, and then we set it aside. And then now we're gonna prepare the sauce as we get this pan ready. Yeah, we're gonna pan fry the pork for 10 minutes or until crispy or golden brown. And then you are gonna make the glaze that is, the glaze is made out of brown sugar, soy sauce, sesame oil, and garlic. Okay. And then once we cook the pork belly for 10 minutes and get it crispy, we're gonna add the glaze for another five minutes. Okay. Until it becomes sticky. Good. And then we'll let it rest and we're gonna serve over, serve over rice. Okay. And then we're gonna put sesame seeds and uh, green, green onions. onions on top. Yo. And I will link the recipe down below.
this is the finished product. What do you want to say? It tastes really good. Um, it has a beautiful texture. It's like crunchy, soft, and sweet, salty all at the same time. Ooh, and she actually served me a plate. All right, y'all. Here we go. We get to taste this together. Okay, so this is the marinated egg. Should I try the egg? With uh, bites I'll try, I'll try by itself first. Here we go. Mm, it's very good. Now we're going to try this. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, this is fantastic. Give this a try. Let me know in the comments below what you think. It's awesome. Tonight for dinner, we are going to have three wood ducks and a speck belly goose. Two of the wood ducks are fresh. One was frozen and the speck belly goose was frozen. We're going to get these cut up and start cooking. We're feeding extra tonight. Our three wood ducks have been cut in half and our speck belly was cut up like a chicken. The sink was sanitized before we season them and after they come out of the sink, it will get sanitized again. Both sides have been seasoned really well. For a wood duck this size, we like to cut them in half. One half is one serving. We're going to cook this in a gravy. I'm going to use the seven quart Dutch oven. Put them skin down to start browning them. The three wood ducks filled the pot nicely. I'm going to go ahead and brown these first and then I'll brown the speckadella goose separately and then I'll put it all back in the pot to cook together. After we brown them on both sides, I'm going to take them out. I like to use the lid as a bowl. It was a medium high. I just turned it to medium low until I get the goose in. Then I'll turn it back up to medium high. The goose is now in the pot. I want to show you before I turn the heat up. Go ahead and add the hearts and the gizzards. And we're going to brown them and cook them the whole time. We're not going to do it separately. Now we're going to turn the heat back up to medium high. And we're going to brown this on both sides. This took about five minutes. Now I'm going to get these out of the pot. And then I'm going to brown my onions and peppers. This is what the pot looks like once we take all of the bird out. I have one large onion, three slices of orange bell pepper, two slices of red, and about three quarts of a tablespoon of sugar. This is sugar in the raw. The heat is still on low. I'm going to give this a stir. The moisture from the onion has already started to pick up a lot of the bits from the bottom of the pot. I'm going to keep it on low for another minute or so until the onions have the opportunity to pick up the rest of these bits. It's been a couple of minutes. The onions have picked up all of the bits from the bottom of the pot. They're not all the way brown, but they're brown enough. Now we're going to take all of this meat. We're going to put it back. In I took the ducks and I turned them on their side. That way each piece of meat is touching the bottom of the pot. And then I took the in the hearts and I put them on top. Now I'm going to take water and cover. About three-fourths up. So we're going to take all this good stuff. I'm going to put it back in the pot. Cover and cook on high. I'll be checking on the water level in 15 minute increments. Here's a 15 minute update. We do not have to add any water. Put it back on. I'll check back in another 15 minutes. For the side tonight, 2.37 pound of green beans in a can. Extra virgin olive oil with garlic. I drain the beans and I rinse them. I'm going to add them to the pot. Add a teaspoon of homemade Cajun seasoning. This does have a lot of garlic in it and we're going to add a little bit of chicken broth. A splash. Give it a stir and simmer on low. So now we're 30 minutes in. Let's give it a look. If you want really tender fall off the bone meat, then add more water. I'm going to add more water. Again, we're covering three-fourths of the duck. Because I'm using a Dutch oven with a self-raising lid, there's no need for me to flip it. Lid back on and check again in another 15 minutes. So it's been 45 minutes. Look at the water level and see that it has cooked down quite a bit. Because there was a lid on the pot and it was a self-raising lid, the moisture did not leave the meat. It just was transferred from the pot into the bird. We're going to turn the temperature down a little bit and make a gravy. Transfer the meat from the pot back into the lid. The longer you cook this, the more tender it will be. The amount of time that you choose to cook this depends on how tender you want it and how much time you have. After I took all the meat out, I just continued to cook and condense until I got to the thickness I desired. This is the gravy. Very nutritious, nutrient dense, rich gravy. To go on top of our rice. Now we're going to take all of the meat, put it back in the pot, 
and cover and let it rest just a few minutes until we're ready to serve. Now the green beans. I went ahead and turned them off while I started making the gravy about 10 minutes ago. Now I'm gonna add one teaspoon of onion powder. Give it a toss and cover until we serve. I had a few green onions left from the pork belly last night, so I went ahead and topped it. It smells so amazing. Let's give it a bite. It smells amazing and it tastes amazing. This is a half of a wood duck. I cut into the wood duck so you can see what it looks like. Fantastic. Wild duck, blessings from the Lord. If you ever have the opportunity to cook wood duck, give it a try like this. If you try preparing it this way, I think you'll be pleased. Mm -hmm.